been reserved for the king's pleasure. Therefore the king's portion is reserved for you. A prepared position awaits you with the king of kings sitting at the head of the table. He desires that you sup with him in the presence of your enemies. By accepting his personal invitation, your needs are met, the desires of your heart fulfilled, and to top it off you will receive the exceeding abundant above all you can ask for or even think of. Imagine that. The more you understand the king's heart, without a shadow of a doubt, you will begin to make more room for heaven's treasures. Welcome to King's Portion. This is Captain Joy Foster, and the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is part 24. The first thing we're going to talk about is realization by revelation and that means that you'll be able to see beyond your dream so that you can see God's dream and now there are principles behind receiving and Jesus talks about that in Mark the 11th chapter and we're just going to read the 22nd and the 24th verses and it says this is what Jesus said he says have the faith of God and that means that you're not just having faith in God, but you're able to express the same thing with your faith as God did to get what he got. And then in verse 24, it says, Therefore I say to you, what things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. So what he's saying is that the promises that you know that God has for you, you desire them. And don't desire anything else so you won't be confused. But when you're praying, you're praying to God and you're believing in your heart. So even though there might be doubt in your head, in your heart, you are doubtless. He said you'll receive the promises when you believe that you receive them because that is the time that you will own them. And then let's look in Hebrews, the 11th chapter and the Eighth verse, begin with the eighth verse. It says, By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into the place which he should after receive for inheritance, obeyed, and he went out, not knowing whether he went. Now let's look at what happened to Sarah in verses 11 and 12 says, Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. And then 12 says, Therefore sprang there even of one and him as good as dead. So many as the stars of the sky in multitude and as the sand which is by the seashore innumerable. Now let's look at that paradigm behind receiving your inheritance by faith. In Hebrews 11th chapter, the 13th and the 14th verse says, For these all died in faith, not having received the promises, but number one, seeing them from afar off. Number two, they were persuaded of them. Number three, they embraced them. And number four, they confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. So let's go in there and see why they didn't receive it. They didn't receive it because they were saying the wrong things. They confessed, but they weren't saying the same thing that God promised. We must be in one consent with God. So yes, they did everything else right. Yes, they saw the promises from afar because they were holding on to the imagination in their heart that God placed there. There, they looked at their promises as being undisputable. In terms of embracing them, there was a work of faith that they made actually tangible room to receive the promises of God. So we have to make sure that you understand this, that your life follows your words. So you want the miracle behind that? You have to say the same thing as what God is saying about your promise to you. 
So what is the message for today? Revolutionize receiving your God-given inheritance by faith in being intentional about dissolving all doubts. The magnitude of faith is not the real issue in receiving your God-given promise because you, if you have just a faith as a mustard seed, all things will be possible to you. But the Holy Spirit has already deposited the measure of faith that is the same measure that God possesses. Remember, it's all of Jesus in all of you. However, it is the capacity of your receiving that transcends the rate of return on your faith investment. So how much room you're willing to provide to accommodate the heaven-born possibilities? You hold the deciding factor. Whether or not your portion is just a scent of water or an outpouring in tsunami proportions. I'll be right back after this message. Plan to stay in tune for the entire program today. The Catherine Joy Foster Music Ministries is a 21st century multimedia marketplace ministry. In your discovery, you will find the power of God present to go where you are, to take you where Jesus is, raising you up, repairing you, restoring you, so that you can be as Jesus is in this world. Now available for workshops, banquets, conferences, webinars, concerts, prayer meetings. You can call area code 216 216- 486-8615, extension 1. Again, that's area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Proud to be an advertiser for King's Portion Web Radio. Thanks for staying tuned to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. Revolutionize receiving your God-given inheritance by faith. In being intentional about dissolving all doubts, the magnitude of faith is not the real issue in receiving your God-given inheritance. Holy Spirit already deposits the measure of faith that is the same amount that God possesses. Remember, it's all of Jesus in all of you. However, it is your capacity of your receiving that transcends the rate of return on your faith investment. How much room are you willing to provide to accommodate heaven-born possibilities? You hold the deciding factor whether or not your portion is just a scent of water or an outpouring in tsunami proportions. We're talking about receiving today. The next point we're going to make is there is reproduction by recreation. So we're talking about that having a faith that receives either restorative or creative miracles. And so we're going to talk about the first level of receiving. First, God is working with Abraham's invocation to exercise his faith to receive seed out of an impossibility, a barren womb. Now, this type of receiving endorses God's guarantee, so Abraham's faith reserves space to accommodate his legacy to fill the barren womb. In Genesis, the 21st chapter, the 1st through the 8th verses in, from the King James Bibles reads, And the Lord visited Sarah, as he had said, And the Lord did unto Sarah, as he had spoken, for Sarah conceived and bare Abraham a son in his old age at the set time of which God had spoken to him. And Abraham called the name of his son that was born unto him, whom Sarah bare to him, Isaac. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac, being eight days old, as God had commanded him. And Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born unto him. And Sarah said, God hath made me to laugh so that all that hear will laugh with me. And she said, who would have said unto Abraham that Sarah should have given children suck? For I have borne him a son in his old age. And the child grew and was weaned. And Abraham made a great feast the same day that Isaac was weaned. So we're going to talk about the first level of receiving. And this word in Greek is 
anadenomai. And you can find that in Hebrews 11th chapter in the 17th verse. And this is from the Amplified Version, the classic edition. And it reads, by faith, Abraham, when he was put to test, while he was testing of his faith, was still in progress, had already brought Isaac for an offering. He who gladly received and welcomed God's promises was ready to sacrifice his son, of whom it was said, through Isaac, shall your descendants be reckoned. Now that word again, received, is anadenomai. It means to entertain as a guest. Now that's from the Strong's. Now in the Vines Dictionary, that same word means to gladly receive. So you can like see this when family and friends are welcoming the military troops back from a tour of duty by relieving them. This is like they're preparing for a special occasion. So that's what happens is that we learn how to have a faith that receives. On our program today, you're going to enjoy the music of Kim Hammond. Now let's welcome her as she sings Rain. And I'll be right back.
visit us on the web at blog.kingsportionlive.com. That's blog.kingsportionlive.com. Thanks for staying tuned to King's Portion. Again, the thing about our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. Revolutionize receiving your God-given inheritance by faith. In being intentional about dissolving all doubts, the magnitude of faith is not the real issue in receiving your God-given inheritance. See, the Holy Spirit already deposited the measure of faith that is at the same level that God possesses. Remember, it's all of Jesus in all of you. However, it is the capacity of your receiving that transcends the rate of return on your faith investment. How much room are you willing to provide to accommodate heaven-born possibilities? You hold the deciding factor whether or not your portion is just a scent of water or an outpouring in tsunami proportions. So the next point we want to make is repossession by resurrection. So we're saying, yes, anything that was dead, person, places, scenes can come alive again. Now, at this point, we're going to talk about this is Abraham now working with God's invocation to exercise his faith to retrieve the harvest out of impossibility, a buried tomb. This type of receiving that we're going to talk about the second level enforces God's guarantee. So Abraham's faith preserves space to accommodate his own legacy. And that means to empty the tomb. We're going to look in Genesis, the 22nd chapter, the first through the 18th verses. And this is from the King James Version. And it reads, and it came to pass after the things that God did tempt, but that means test. He does not tempt you evil or good. That God did test Abraham and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. And he said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, and get thee to the land of Moriah, and offer him there for burnt offering up on one of the mountains, which I will tell of thee. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of the young men with him and Isaac his son and clave the wood for the burnt offering and rose up and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to the young man, Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went both of them together and they came to the place which God had told him of. And Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. And the angel of the Lord called unto him out of heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, here I am. And he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou feareth God, seeing that thou hast not withheld thy son, thy only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked. And behold, behind him a ram caught in a thicket by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. And in the message translation it says, God will see to it. And then as it is this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time and said, By myself I have sworn, and saith the Lord, for because thou have done this thing, I have not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed 
as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies and in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou have obeyed my voice now we're talking about the second level of receiving and it can be found in hebrews 11th chapter and in the 19th verse and this receiving is komitzo and the verse 19 reads and abraham reasoned that god was able to raise isaac up even from among the dead indeed in a sense that isaac was figuratively dead potentially sacrificed he did actually receive him back from the dead so visiting this word receive komitzo from the strong's translation means to carry off as if from harm now in the vice dictionary that same word means to receive back to recover this is like military troops being redeployed to retrieve persons places or things from harm yes there is a way to get everything back that god wants you have in the first place but we must be determined to be receiving believers. I'll be right back after this message from my sponsor. Plan to stay tuned for the entire program today. I was just standing there, basking in the sun, and all of a sudden, I was soaking wet. There wasn't a sign in the sky, so I was unprepared without an umbrella. But in the end, it just didn't matter. I loved every minute of it. I knew I was living under open heavens. It really does give new meaning to being overtaken by blessing, not a dry spot. This is Fran the Fan of H-D-O-R. Uh-oh, here comes the rain again. been listening to King's Portion Live with web host Catherine Joy Foster. Thanks for staying tuned to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. You have to revolutionize receiving your God-given inheritance by faith. In being intentional about dissolving all doubts, the magnitude of faith is not the real issue in receiving your God-given inheritance. Holy Spirit already deposited the measure of faith that is at the same amount that God possesses. Remember, it's all of Jesus in all of you. However, it is your capacity of receiving that transcends your rate of return on your faith investment. How much room are you willing to provide to accommodate heaven-born possibilities? You hold the deciding factor whether or not your portion is just a scent of water or an outpouring in tsunami proportions. So now we are going to talk about resignation by reclamation. That means now we're bringing our place where we are not doing our own thing in our own way, but we are coming into full alignment with God and how he wants to do things. Now we're going to talk about the works of the flesh that produce unbelief. And unbelief saying that you don't believe God. You're believing something other than what God says. We're going to look in Genesis, the 16th chapter, the first of the sixth verse. And this is from the King James Version. It reads, Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare him no children, and she had an handmaid, an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said to Abraham, Behold now, the Lord has restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abraham had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband Abraham to be a wife. So at this time he was 85 years old. And he went in into Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarah said to Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. 
the Lord judge between me and thee. And Abram said to Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thine hand. Do to her as it pleases thee. And when Sarai dealt heartily with her, she fled from her face. So you can see what is happening in this particular situation. Number one, Sarai is believing the wrong thing about God that he has restrained from her. That means that she was believing that God was withholding, giving to her. And in her fear, it manipulated what she thought she wanted because she felt that she was acting out of desperation. And desperation is not faith. Desperation is desperation. We want to make a couple of points here. Number one is the determination to exercise abiding faith that pleases God. In the Hebrews 11th chapter, the 6th verse, and this is from the Living Bible, it reads, You can never please God without faith, without depending on Him. Anyone who wants to come to God must believe that there is a God and that He rewards those who sincerely look for Him. Number two, now there is a definition of abiding faith and you can find that in Hebrews 11 chapter the first and the second verses from the living translation and it reads what is faith it is a confident assurance that something we want is going to happen it is a certainty that what we hope for is waiting for us even though we cannot see it up ahead men of faith in days of old were famous for their faith. So God wants you to live in faith, walk in faith, move in faith, and do everything in faith. Now there is a demonstration of abiding faith. I mean, that can be found in the Hebrews 11th chapter beginning with the 32nd verse. And this is also from the Living Bible. And it reads, well, how much more do I need to say? It would take too long to recount the stories of the faith of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephna and David and Samuel and all of the other prophets. These people all trusted God and the result won battles, overthrew kingdoms, ruled their people well and received what God had promised them. They were kept from harm in a den of lions and in a fiery furnace. Some through their faith escaped death by the sword. Some were made strong again after they had been weak or sick. Others were given great power in battle. They made whole armies turn and run away. And some women, by faith, received their loved ones back again from death. But others trusted God and were beaten to death, preferring to die rather than turn from God and be free, trusting that they would rise to a better life afterwards. And then we're also going to read Hebrews 11, chapter the 39th and 40th verses again from the living bible and it says and these men died and these men of faith though they trusted god won his approval none of them received all that god had promised them for god wanted them to wait and share even better rewards that were prepared for us so this is saying that god wanted them to delay going to heaven because he wanted them to be a credible witness of the glory of God on earth. Now again on our program, you'll enjoy the music of Kim Hammond. Now let's welcome her as she sings, You Keep Asking. And I'll be right back after her song. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna love you even though you don't 
Listen to what I say. I need you to trust me so I can show you many better days. Back away to let you make decisions for yourself, not someone else. You keep asking why I love you. You should know I'm asking for some of your time, but you say I rock your floor. King's portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. Revolutionize receiving your God-given inheritance by faith. In being intentional about dissolving all doubts, the magnitude of faith is not the real issue in receiving your God-given inheritance. The Holy Spirit already deposited the measure of faith that is at the same level that God possesses. Remember, it's all of Jesus in all of you. However, it is your capacity of receiving that transcends your rate of return on your faith investment. Now, how much room are you willing to provide to accommodate heaven-born possibilities? You hold the deciding factor whether or not your portion is just a scent of water or an outpouring in tsunami proportions. Now we are going to visit representation by reflection. We want you to have a perfect recall of uh, how you receive the victory, how you receive the promise by faith. So you have to remember this, having perfect recall that you know that if you have won one battle, you can win them all. So let's talk about what did Abraham do that reinforced him receiving his promises? We're going to look in Romans, the fourth chapter, the 18th through the 21st verses in the Living Bible. This is, so when God told Abraham that he would give him a son who would have many descendants and become a great nation, Abraham believed God, even though such a promise just couldn't come to pass and because his faith was strong he did not worry about the fact that he was too old to be a father at the age of 100 and that Sarah his wife at 90 was also much too old to have a baby but Abraham never doubted 
he believed God for his faith and trust grew even stronger and he praised God for this blessing even before it happened. He was completely sure that God was well able to do anything he promised. So saying adapt how Abraham reinforced the promises and that means that praise precedes the victory. Let's look at two things one is the progress of abiding faith. And that can be found in Romans, the 10th chapter, the 17th verse, and from the Passion Translation, it reads, Faith then is birthed in a heart that responds to God's anointed utterance of the anointed one. So it's saying that God is the one that birthed the faith. But we just make room for him to birth it in our heart. So it's out of the heart of the God. And he also gives you an utterance. That means that this is the rhema word. Words straight from the mouth of God into your heart that bursts the faith. And that is how you're going to make progress. Go from one level of faith to the next level of faith. And then there is also the process of abiding faith. So every time you use the same process for any area, it is going to happen. The only difference is the levels of receiving that you're going to use. Let's look in Romans, the 10th chapter, the 9th verse, again, in the Passion Translation, it says, And what is God's living message? It is the revelation of faith for salvation, which is the message which we preach. For if you publicly declare with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will experience salvation. So again, these two verses show you there is a heart and a mouth connection and they agree with God's dream for you. Well, today you can say, that you don't have a relationship with God. Well, all you need to do is ask Jesus into your heart so he can be the Lord and Savior of your life. And when he does, you are in right standing with him and your faith will be counted as righteousness just as Abraham's faith was counted righteousness. So then you have placed yourself in a position to receive all the inheritance that God has for you. Why don't you say this prayer to me? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I recognize that I need to be saved. And I know that Jesus is the only way. Now I ask you to come into my heart, Jesus. Be the Lord and Savior of my life. And I know that old things have passed away. And behold, all things are new. And now I'm the newest creation in the body of Christ and I thank you for my new birth in Jesus name. Amen. Now if you said that prayer, why don't you email us at info at kingsportionlife.com. That's info at kingsportionlife.com and we will send you some encouragement along the way. Now let's return to the remaining portions of King's Portion Life after this message from our sponsor. We invite you to visit our new interactive website. Please log on to www.kingsportionlive.org. That's www.kingsportionlive.org. We believe that you will discover something that will speak to the royal blood in you. Thanks for staying tuned for the conclusion of our program today, which bears the theme, the tsunami blessing inside and out. Now, revolutionize receiving your God-given inheritance by faith in being intentional about dissolving all doubts. The magnitude of faith is not the real issue in receiving your God-given inheritance. Holy Spirit already deposited the measure of faith that's in the same amount God possesses. Remember, it's all of Jesus and all of you. However, it is capacity of your receiving that transcends your rate of return on your faith investment. How much room are you willing to provide to accommodate heaven-born possibilities? You hold the deciding factor whether or not your portion is just a scent of water or an outpouring in 
tsunami proportions. We're going to look at this. Revolution by resuscitation. That means that God is now breathing new life into you that births his dream through you. Now, this is this, that God has made a covenant with Abraham that rests even down to you and I. And he is reinforcing Abraham in such a way that Abraham can receive the promise of God at the same level that God has given it to him. Now, there's five examples, and they're examples of the covenant that we have with God, which is sure, it's ordered in all things. Things. It is our desire and it's in all things. And God wants it to spring forth unto you that he'll supply it and it's everlasting. So it cannot be dissolved, but it's made by blood, the blood of Jesus, the precious blood of the lamb. Let's look in Genesis the 17th chapter, the fourth and fifth verses, and it says, And as for me, behold, my covenant is with thee, and this is God, and thou shalt be a father of many nations. And he's talking to Abraham. He says, Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, exalted father, but thy name shall be Abraham, for a father of many nations have I made thee. And then in Genesis, the 17th chapter, the sixth to the eighth verses said, And I will make thee exceeding fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and the king shall come of thee, and I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee, and I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession, and I will be their God. The third mention of covenant that God is reinforcing to Abraham, and this is in Genesis, the 17th chapter, the 9th through the 14th verses, and it reads, And God said to Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee and their generations. This is my covenant which ye shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. Every man child among you shall be circumcised, and ye shall circumcise the flesh of the foreskin, and it shall be a token of the covenant betwixt me and you. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generations he that is born in your house or bought with money of a stranger which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is bought with thy money must needs be circumcised. And my covenant shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. And the uncircumcised man child whose flesh of their foreskin is not circumcised, that soul shall be cut off from his people. He has broken my covenant. And now what God is using is circumcising our heart, that we're opening up our heart to him. Let's look in the fourth promise of bringing forth Abraham's seed. And this is before Isaac was born. In Genesis, the 17th chapter, the 15th through the 19th verse, and this is what God says to Abraham, as for Sarai, your wife, Thou shalt not call her name Sarah, but Sarah shall be her name. And I will bless her and give thee a son also of her. Yes, I will bless her and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is a hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah, thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed. 
and thou shalt call his name Isaac, and I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant, and with his seed after him. So he's thinking, wow, God is doing this thing. I can't just relax my faith and take a ride. I have to make room for what God is saying. I can't be passive. I have to do some work to make sure it happens. Then let's look at the fifth time that God gives assurance of his covenant in Genesis, the 18th chapter, the ninth through the 15th verses said, and they said unto him, and these were the three who visit Abraham. And he says, where is Sarah, thy wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. And this is the Lord saying to him, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life and loss. Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. That means that she could not have any more uh, menstruation. Therefore, Sarah laughed within her, saying, After I am waxed old, shall I have pleasure with my Lord also old? That means that he was also impotent. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for God? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Then Sarah denied, saying, I laugh not, for she was afraid. And he said unto her, Nay, but thou did laugh. So this is what God is doing. When Sarah laughed, it was different than when Abraham laughed. She was laughing in unbelief. And it says that she didn't believe the covenant of God made. But God's covenant to us is everlasting. It is considered the collateral for the delivery, in this case, of Isaac. And what happened within the nine months, Abraham and Sarah birthed Isaac. And then again, you see in the last verse, God is contending for the faith to bring closure to unbelief when she denied. And you shall want God in your life, and I shall want God in my life to make sure that we know that he'll be a surety to us for good because we're dealing with a God who cannot lie that he has promises that he has made with an oath with a vow that are undisputable this is captain joy foster for king's portion where we speak to the royal blood in you to the King's Portion with radio host Catherine Joy Foster. Today's podcast is available for download. Log on to blog.kingsportionlive.com or email info at kingsportionlive.com.